access to the to the screen here. So before we get to our first real topic uh, of conversation, is there anything prior to fueling for elite training that you wanted to to scroll through? Uh, yeah, so the first part here, and just kind of relates to your your second question about what I think about rugby. Um, rugby was really about a year and a half ago my first sport that I completely integrated into. Um, so before I was working in a clinic and kind of doing some some work as a contractor. So this was the first time I was day to day in the environment, and it was a little bit overwhelming as my first sport. Rugby is kind of intense, <laughs> um, and I hadn't played it before. I I had seen actually Canada play a 15s game uh, back in Ottawa, but I hadn't really had much exposure to it. So I've been absolutely floored by the hard work and the craziness of the game. And I, I love it. It's it's really awesome. I think my first exposure to it uh, for a sevens tournament was actually waking up at 3 a.m. when uh, the women were in Dubai, right when I found out I got the job and I was in Toronto at the time. So I woke up at 3 a.m. to watch your game and I was so excited. <laughs> So thinking about um, kind of the nutrition aspect around sport, um, a lot of people would obviously think that I would kind of start talking about nutrition and say it's the most important thing. Um, but for any, if there's players listening, if you think about all the reasons why you're great at what you do, how many of you have nutrition come to mind immediately? Probably none. <laughs> because your talent and your motivation and your training and avoiding injury, all those other pieces are way more impactful. But as you become more elite, those smaller factors like nutrition are so much more important. We sum it up with a good diet won't make average athletes elite, but a poor diet will make elite athletes average. So in other words, if we were to eat like Kaylee and Adam, we're not going to be able to perform like them. But if they were to miss really important pieces in their, tra in their training nutrition, like you know, recovery or um, you know, eating enough during a high volume training block, then their performance might be impacted. Awesome. I'm happy to move on to the next one. So go, have, yeah. go for it. <laughs> awesome. Sorry. I can't see, just so everyone knows, I can't actually see our three panelists. So I'm trying to feed off. So <laughs> Vanessa, feel free to just say, hey, Nathan, we're moving on. And I'll be like, yeah, let's get on with it. So <laughs> um, <laughs> moving into, well, we, we've got uh, a few different topics for us to discuss today. Uh, we're, we're probably going to cover five-ish uh, topics. The first one being fueling for elite training and uh, what the importance of carbohydrates might be, uh, as well as eating before training. So Adam is going to be our main conversationalist at this point, which is great. So Adam, talk to us through what does performance eating mean to you, and how might your needs as a performance athlete, obviously, be different than your average person? Um, maybe there's an anecdote about breakfast in particular, and, and yeah. carbohydrates in particular, that you can maybe lend to the conversation. Yeah. So we had to start out with the big scary word, carbohydrates, right? Uh, everyone knows that it's uh, you can't get skinny on carbohydrates. Um, yeah, no, uh, so performance eating uh, is kind of like when you think about nutrition, you think about like what is my food doing for me and like what do I need it to do for me? Uh, and uh, performance eating is the idea that, you know, a person like me or Kaylee, like we go into training every single day. We have, you know, two to three sessions. We're running like lots of kilometers. We're lifting weights. We're putting our bodies through a lot of you know, tension, a lot of work. And, uh, you know, so so eating around, being able to recover and, you know, our muscles rebuilding with the protein and having the energy to, to perform, but not just doing it one day, but waking up the next day and doing it again, doing it again, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. And part of that is nutrition and, and allowing us to wake up and feel good and continue to perform at the levels that we want to perform at every single day and not have that dip. You know, um, when we train, we'll have different, different levels of intensity to, to work on that for our bodies, but the nutrition plays a huge part in being able to recover after your session and also during your session. So as an example with the carbohydrate, um, you know, this year I've done a lot of tinkering with my diet. And uh, one of the things that I found that I wasn't eating enough carbohydrates in the morning and throughout the day uh, for my sessions to maintain my energy levels. Um, I always kind of just, uh, you know, thought that a smoothie was going to do it for me in the morning uh, before training. I particularly don't like to eat a lot before training um, just because I like to kind of keep the stomach with easily digestible foods, 
get what I need, get going for the day kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, so I sat down with Vanessa and, and, and went through what I was eating and what she had recommended for me. Um, and, you know, adding in, uh, you know, I, what I ended up eating was, you know, an egg wrap with a, with a, with a nice big wrap and then, and then a smoothie with a third of a cup of oats and, uh, banana and you know so I ended up having a lot of carbohydrates and at first it was like I get to training and be like oh like it's a lot of food but after a while like my body just started to recognize like look we have all this good food we have all these carbohydrates to burn through these these uh, exercises and to kind of give you that energy that you need uh, and then I started uh, implementing snacks in between the sessions so I'd have a little energy ball with like some oats and peanut butter and my little things that's just kind of like continuing to feed that that need for energy, that need to fuel your system. And then I've really noticed after about a week of feeling a little bit not quite like how I normally did, it just like immediately I felt the change in, uh, in, in what proper fueling and continuing to fuel your body throughout the day, especially when you're speaking in terms of high performance and wanting to make sure that you're giving like every single bit of yourself during your session so that you can get better. Um, it was a huge eye opener for me as to what carbohydrates can do for you when you're eating them through your day, but more importantly around your workouts and in between your sessions. Um, so that was kind of a, a cool sort of realization for me, which, which has kind of carried over, um, to, to everything that I do now. So, um, yeah, carbohydrates are definitely interesting. A lot to learn about that. Can, can I ask a, a question, Zoobs? So sure. you, you said that it felt like it was a lot of food. Um, did you just become accustomed to feeling like it's a lot of food? And so you still feel that way when you get to training or have you, have you kind of changed what that feels like just because your body is now used to Need, you know, using that energy more quickly or, or however that works. And I know I, I'm, I'm not speaking from a scientific perspective at all when I say that. Vanessa will, will obviously correct yeah. me into that. But just in terms of how you feel, like do you still feel uncomfortable going into a session, but it's you're just used to it? Or have you become more comfortable with being more full maybe? Uh, yeah, no. So it's kind of like that, you know, that old saying, it kind of takes two weeks to break a habit, you know, uh, for my sit for my body, it kind of took a week or two to, to adapt to those changes. But now it just feels like normal, just feels like how I felt before when I was having my old diet. Uh, except now I kind of just like I started to notice that I was just I had a little bit more energy and I was just, you know, able to kind of push a little bit harder um, with with that fueling. So I definitely feel like after after about two weeks, it was just like normal, just you know, my body had adapted, my system was ready to go, and that was kind of just the normal situation for me. Cool. And well, Nathan, uh, there, there is a little bit yeah, of science in that. <laughs> yeah, there is. There yeah. is. Science. There is science, science. around. Like, <laughs> you're, you're being able to adapt to a little, uh, a little bit more fuel. So, you know, it's a little bit more in the endurance space where, you know, you can think of a cyclist trying to take in as much fuel as possible over four hours. But same thing can be applied to you guys where, you know, if you're not used to having anything before training, um, then even starting small can help the gut adapt slowly over time. Um, and so I, I remember working with Adam during during this time, and I came down to the weight room, and this was the day after I think we had just increased your your breakfast. And I, yeah. you saw me, I saw you, and you were just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's rough. And then two days later, you're like, man, I feel amazing. So I think it's a really great anecdote for people to hear around, you know, you can, you can still train at an elite level while kind of eating the way you do. Um, I mean, you were able to do it, but there's a way that if you increase and kind of think about the specific timings and you're um, a little bit more intentional with your nutrition, then you can feel so much better and your body can um, kind of repair a lot easier and recover better. So um, it just, it's a great, a great thing to share. Well, in, in, instead of getting into why people are afraid of carbs, Vanessa, why don't you just walk us through why they're so important? <laughs> For sure. So um, Adam definitely gave us a, a good start there. Um, I really just wanted to give um, a little takeaway for each section that we're talking about for everyone listening. So, you know, obviously Kaylee and Adam are are the elites, so we're, we all don't have to do everything that they, that they do. Um, but some big takeaways, um, thinking about that carbohydrate, again, it's your most efficient form of fuel for training and your body needs the most of it right around training. So as we talked about kind of before and Adam talked about during and then also after to help recover. Um, also need a little bit more on days where training is a bit more intense or, or longer. So if you have longer training sessions or multiple training sessions or you're pushing really high quality work, that's where we really, really need that carbohydrate. So 
if we're thinking quick little rule for eating before training, because that's typically something that people have quite a few questions about. We've agreed carbohydrates important. So quick rule of thumb um, for anyone out there thinking about what to eat and when to eat before training is our little three, two, one rule. So if you only have about an hour before training, remember carbs, most important. So pick something that's just a quick little carbohydrate snack, easy to digest. Um, there's a bunch of examples there, but obviously this isn't where we would want to have, you know, a full burrito that has some beans and um, meat and kind of heavy things like cheese uh, right before you start training. But if you do have a little bit more time, you can start including some of those foods that take longer to digest, like fiber and protein. So if you have a couple hours, you know, you can add a little bit of protein to that carbohydrate rich snack. And if you have about three hours or more, that's where you can have that, that full meal. So just a quick little rule of thumb. And if you are someone uh, listening who's thinking, you know, I, I really just struggle to eat anything beforehand, uh, a couple quick things to try. Liquid, definitely easier to digest. Um, and again, trying something small. So if you wake up and you, you know, have a run or weights in the morning and you're used to just not having anything, starting with a banana or you know, a little slice of toast, something just small. Um, you know, I think, and as Adam and I talked about when he was talking about the carbohydrates, um, you know, we could talk about what exactly are your perfect um, requirements for the day. But if we're way down here, then we have to just start small and move up rather than all of a sudden, you know, you're eating your max amount <laughs> in your entire day. So it does take time. Um, and just a little bit of something is better than nothing. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, anything else before we move on, Vanessa? I'm good, unless there's questions. <laughs> yeah, we're going to hold questions for the moment, but folks, please do type them in. We will try and get to some in the middle, uh, but definitely at the end, we do have a bit of context, and I want to make sure we get through that first. So just a reminder, type your questions in, um, but we will try to get to as much as we can. Um, I do want to get us to our next topic real quick around muscle recovery and growth. Haley, you're on the spot, kid. Um, talk to us a little bit about the importance of protein and eating after training. So Vanessa talked about, you know, when we want to eat before, after all that kind of stuff. So, uh, an anecdote perhaps on your part around, uh, eating post training and what must, uh, sorry, what recovery is meant for you when it comes to nutrition. Sure. Um, yeah, so this is still a topic like I'm working through. Um, I'll just kind of go through my thoughts and my struggles, I guess, on this. Like for me, um, I'm a person that loses or like can't maintain my muscle um, as well as other people, especially in an off season or um, a low training block. So in general with this, like it's about like, for me, it's the timing and what I am eating. Um, so Vanessa has worked a lot with me on implementing more like protein rich snacks. So this um, helps me obviously fill the gap of where I'm missing of when I'm um, not eating the meal and she'll probably go through it later but like snacking is very important like you don't want to go through a long time without feeling your body um so yeah I guess my two um things in this topic I'll also go through um like the challenges around traveling for me and that like that for me that's um it's harder to get in the nutrition and the protein when um it's inconsistent like so when you're traveling like you're on an airplane you might not be able to get the foods that you want or if you're in a different country and um like for instance for me when we were in japan they eat a lot of fish let's say and i don't like fish so i remember vanessa came up to me and was like hey i'm noticing like you're not really eating as much as like you would or should and i was like yeah like i just can't get myself to eat these things and we're in a block where we're going to be playing in a few days and i need to make sure that i'm eating and recovering and um, so something that she helped me with is also like bringing protein powder with me on, um, tours. So that's something that I've implemented in my, um, in my plan to make sure I'm at least eating what I need to, and if not topping up at the end of the day or something. So, um, yeah, I guess that's what I have for that. Awesome. Vanessa, what do you think? Well, I, I was just, uh, b before Vanessa, um, uh, adds a thing, you, you mentioned, the importance of muscle mass and retaining muscle mass. Uh, yeah. We're not training, obviously, at the same rate that we were pre-COVID at the moment. How has maybe COVID affected um, your your need for additional protein? In, yeah. You know, you're, you're not training as much, but you need to 
maintain that mass? How does that work with uh, with the current situation? Right. So I, I've I've definitely struggled. I think this time has been a little easier for me. Like I've I maintained my mass, which is surprising, but I'm also happy about that. Um, but I struggle with I think a routine and the fact that COVID um, took me off my routine. It made me have to try to make more of a plan or talk with Vanessa. And I definitely go through days where I'm not motivated or not like on, I don't do as well as if I was at like a normal training block, I guess. Um, so yeah, definitely work with Vanessa has really helped me. I'm trying to make like a plan of like, hey, I, I'll eat this this day, but then if I fall off, which I think I'll talk about later, like I'll order it and I'll be okay with that type thing. So. Right. Good. Yeah. Well, well, Vanessa, this is something a lot of us are dealing with is uh, we're all off routines at the moment, um, canning back slowly to some routine. Um, but but uh, in, in the case of our post um, activity recovery, what are some key takeaways and maybe how can we adapt to that routine similar to what Kaylee was just saying, but maybe something else, some other ideas that we might have as well. Yeah, for sure. And I think the big piece when we're talking about all of this, um, you know, Kaylee had a really great point in thinking that if anything is off kilter, life's a little bit hard. So especially where something is so challenging, like maintaining muscle and we don't have the proper signals with training and nutrition to make it happen, it's really, really hard to do. And when I say signals, I mean just your training and then your eating and what you're eating. So, you know, thinking about on the one hand, you could be in off season, you're not training as much, you're in the gym less often, your schedule's kind of a little bit looser so it's harder to maintain that consistency and then on the other hand if we're going through really high volume training blocks or we are um you know traveling that can also throw everything off and when you're in a high volume training block you have so much more energy that you're expending so we also have to think about that so on either end of the spectrum maintaining muscle it can be a challenge for a lot of a lot of these athletes and obviously with rugby the muscle is super important speed, power, being explosive um, and resilient in contact. I think all of those pieces are important at, at all aspects of the, of the training year. So um, thinking about the muscle growth, and we get a ton of different questions about this, and especially working with some, some younger athletes who just really want to put on muscle so quickly. Um, we have to be a bit patient. <laughs> if, you're, if you're thinking about, um, it does take a really long time. Uh, if we speed it up, we might not get the result that we're looking for. So Overall, there's three main things you need for, for muscle growth. The first is the right training. So you need the right training to make sure that you're actually getting that stimulus to grow your muscle. So if you were to eat a whole bunch and sit on the couch and have a protein shake in your hand, you're not gonna be putting on muscle mass. So strength and conditioning coaches are super important. Other two nutrition related. So we want enough calories. Growing muscle takes a lot of energy. So if we don't have enough calories coming in overall, we're not gonna, have extra calories left over to build. And then the last one is thinking about optimizing your protein intake. And so Kaylee talked about spreading your protein out. So a couple things that we wanna be thinking about. Um, again, another three things. Total is the first one. So think about the total amount of protein you take in. Um, really important from the overall amount is gonna support you know, your muscle growth. It also helps to support your immune system um, and maintain your muscle mass. And I think Adam and I spoke a couple of weeks ago and we, we joked that you're basically functionally injured through season because you, you have so much contact and your bodies go through crazy, crazy things. So we do need a little bit more protein to help repair. And since you guys are going through so much and your muscles are breaking down from a lot of weight training, contact, small injuries, uh, we do need a, a larger amount of protein overall. But the tricky piece is that we can only take in a certain amount of protein at once that's gonna help with our, our muscle growth or recovery. So if we were to have 150 grams of protein in this massive shake with a whole bunch of protein powder, your body's only gonna be able to use 20 to 30, maybe up to 40 if you're a large person um, at one time to help support your muscle. So yes, important to get the overall amount, but the best thing you can do as Kaylee said is spread your protein evenly through the day. And then the last one is thinking about type. I'm not going to get into this in huge detail, um, but there are a couple of different protein foods that help signal the muscle in a little bit better ways. 
Um, so leucine rich foods, which on the right side, you'll see some examples of that, um, mostly in kind of dairy and, and meat and eggs. Um, those are the kinds of foods that are gonna really help stimulate that muscle process of, of, um, of signaling and growth. Awesome. Um, I think we might have a couple of minutes here for a couple of questions. Um, so why don't I um, take a look at this real quick. Um, uh, here's a question for you, Vanessa, potentially. Uh, but should you look to limit or fast on rest days? Oh, great question. <laughs> um, so limit and fast are two very different things. <laughs> um, and I think the biggest thing that we talk about, and I'm gonna show one photo later, so I'll, I'll try to remember and refer back to what I'm talking about now, um, is that perfect timing, we're talking about protein. Protein needs don't really vary across the season for these athletes because you essentially you know, want to recover all the time, you wanna maintain your muscle mass. Um, we just need that protein signaling to support everything over the course of the year. What does fluctuate is carbohydrates. And as Adam was talking about carbohydrates, biggest source of energy, um, when we put out more effort, we need more effort coming in to help us put out that effort. When we're not doing as much, and we'll talk about this in, in uh, our injury section as well, we don't need as much of, car of the carbohydrate energy to support what we're doing because we're not doing as much. So the big thing is that protein stays pretty consistent and um, the carbohydrate is going to change or what we call periodize. So you're adjusting it based on that training demand. Great. Um, and just one kind of follow-up question from someone different, but uh, maybe that might um, relate is, is it possible, um, sorry, when you, would you recommend looking at a high carb, low fat, high fat, low carb? And I know we haven't talked about fats yet, uh, necessarily outside, you know, um, in terms of you know how that differs maybe from protein and stuff, but um, which which of those types of um, I guess silos I, would you recommend for optimal performance, or yeah. would you not recommend either of them and go with something else? Yeah, so that's kind of building off of what we just talked about because you know I would say if we're just comparing high carbohydrate, um, low fat, and higher fat and lower carbohydrate. I would say if an athlete was like, I have to do one or the other for some reason, um, I would say definitely go for the carbohydrate because we know that that's what, you know, it's our most efficient source of, of energy. Um, we know now that there are some studies that can help if you are, you know, increasing the fat in your diet, you can um, increase your body's ability to burn fat as a fuel. But the really, really important piece here is that that happens to the detriment of your body billing, body's ability to burn carbohydrates as a fuel. And we know that at highest intensities, we need that carbohydrate energy. So hands down at this point, there's absolutely nothing pointing to a sevens athlete should, that they should go high fat. They 100% need that carbohydrate energy um, to perform at their best. Now, again, coming back to what we just talked about with changing our, our intake based on our training, super important that we get the carbohydrate when we need it but we can decrease it a little bit um, when we don't need it. So we're essentially just trying to match um, how much carbohydrate we're taking in to support our, our energy demands um, for our training. And we can have more when we need more and scale back a little bit when we don't need as much. Great, there, there are a few other questions, some of which I, I do actually wanna to get to at the end, but they might be more generic so we can get to those a little bit later. In the meantime, I'd like to move on to our game day fueling. Um, and so this is both to Kaylee and, and Adam. So um, Kaylee, why don't you start us off? But basically what, what we'd like to get to is, is what's challenging about game day fueling? Um, and then what are your priorities about what you eat on game day? I, I know um, I, might, I might get into some differences around sevens or fifteens if you've had both experiences or what that feels like for both of those. Um, but yeah, if you can just start with what, what fueling on game day looks like for you, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, so I think game day fueling for everyone is going to look different. Um, for me, it's hard. Like Adam said it before, he likes to eat um, easy, digestible food on hard days. So I think this is something that um, I do as well. Um, so for the most part, at the beginning, like I wake up, I have breakfast. Breakfast, I try to eat like a solid solid food breakfast um 
And the reason for that is because I'm trying to get the right nutrients for my body to start the day. Um, and that's like simple. I keep it to something I know that I have like eaten before on a hard training day. So I know it works for me and I'm not just adding something new because I want to make sure that I feel good for game day. Um, so that's usually, I just like have eggs, toast, fruit, making sure I have my protein, my carbohydrates to get me through the day. Um, but after that, I turned to more like a liquid diet, which is for me, is just like easier. So like smoothies, um, after games, we have like a revive drink, which is a mix of protein and carbohydrates to one recover right after a game, but then also get us starting, um, recovering like throughout, I guess that time period between games. Um, and then if we do have time, like we go to the meal hall and at that point, it's just how I'm feeling. So if like, I feel like I can like take something down that's more solid, I'll try to have like maybe chicken and rice. Um, if it's a short turnaround and I feel like I, I just can't do it, then I stick to like maybe a smoothie. And if I still can't do that, I know like I can have crackers, I can have some candy, some chewable, um, like little treats, because again, like that's, that's the carbohydrates, sorry, carbohydrates. Um, and I'll give me the energy that I need throughout the day. And then after the next game, same process, depending on what I feel like at that time is what I'm going to eat. It's more of a, a liquid diet, which I don't really like to say, but it's the easiest to digest at that time. And, and then at the end of the day, I try to eat solid food again. Um, we also have casein, which is a, a protein powder, which we usually have before bed, and that's a slow um, release protein. So it gives us um, our body, our body, um, the nutrients we need, like when we're sleeping, to help recover and hopefully not be as sore the next day. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, first of all, don't don't feel like you you can't say something. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about performance nutrition and this is yeah. what works for you. So uh, if, if that's what it is, a liquid diet on game day, then that's what it is, right? So it's fantastic. Um, um, Adam, just building off that, uh, it, it, maybe there's some slight differences in terms of how you fuel yourself during the day, but if you don't mind also touching on maybe some uh, specific supplements that are used uh, during the day for you guys and what those might be and how you feel like they help or, or, or um, maybe move away from food into a supplement, you know, how, how does that mix into how your diet uh, works for that game day? Right. So, um, so like just touching on what was said before with that three, two, one timing, um, I'll get to the supplements in a sec, but just to like to give everyone a picture of what things look like. Um, sometimes the time between our games, you know, like when we're playing sevens tournaments, we're playing all day, right? We're, we're at the turn, we're at the, at the facility all day and like, think about your system and like what happens to your body when, when you have to warm up and ramp up and play a game and then you have to calm down and you have to ramp up again and you have to calm down and what's happening in your gut, what's happening all over the place. Right? So, um, it really, it really depends on what we do, but a uh, lot with, with the supplementation, a lot of that is the protein is probably the number one, uh, that we use on game day or practice or anything. Protein supplementation, uh, after training is a huge one. Uh, we also use a carbohydrate supplementation. Um, it's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called right now, but it's basically a powder that we mix in with a protein shake. Um, Vanessa probably remembers what it's called. Um, but, um, mixing vanilla protein powder and orange Gatorade because it tastes like a creamsicle. Yeah, it tastes like a creamsicle. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, creamsicle. I love that. Oh. Um, so, you know, we use, we use that like immediately after games. Um, but as far as like team-wide supplementation and what we use during games, I would say that protein and, uh, and a, carbohydrate, a carbohydrate supplement immediately after we play uh, just to get that initial, you know, initial boost of energy so that our bodies can start recovering immediately because we have to play. And sometimes you have to play three hours later or five hours later or even like an hour later. And depending on what your turnaround is, is really going to determine what you eat. And at the end of the day, like, you know, Kylie was saying she's on the liquid diet and it's like, you know, but but whatever works for you works for you. And and, and to be perfectly honest with you, if you have if you if you just can't manage to digest food and you have to eat three muffins and a coffee before a game and have a protein shake then so be it it's like get the food in you because you need the energy you need the nutrients you got to have it so you know we have when we go to the food hall in between games we have lots of options you know thankfully the catering and the food there is like you know top notch wherever we go um and like around the world like ellie was saying it's different and you know there's different options and so you know dietary restrictions or things that people just don't like eating um, but at the end of the day you have to just get the nutrients in 
And the best guideline that you can follow is understanding the time between the games that you have so that you can make the best choices to give your body the best opportunity to recover and to prepare for the next game. Um, and so I would say that's probably the biggest thing that we focus on as athletes is our turnaround and sort of how we're going to recover uh, to play another 14 minutes at the highest level we can. So, um, yeah. Kaylee or Adam, sorry, real quick. I know Vanessa, I can't see you, so I didn't know you wanted that. But, but real quick, if we, is there any differences between 15s and sevens uh, for either of you, Kaylee or 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 Adam, just in terms of the overall game day approach? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly touch on that. I mean, if you think about it, with, with 15s, I mean, uh, as far as the types of food that you eat, I mean, not really. Um, it's just that when you're playing 15s, you're preparing for one game. So you wake up, you warm up, play an 80 minute game, and then you're done. You're done for the day. And, you know, the recovery aspect and the preparation leading up to and the warm up, it's all very similar. But with sevens, you're playing multiple games, you have multiple warm ups, multiple cool downs, you're doing all this throughout the day. So, you know, your nutrition requirements are going to be different naturally than if you're just playing one game. And now, I mean, that's an 80 minute game and that's a whole nother, you know, it's a whole nother situation. But when you're preparing for the differences between preparing for one game uh, as opposed to preparing for three games, you know, it, it's, it's different and your requirements are gonna be different. I don't know if Kelly has anything else to say about that. But. No, that, that was that was great. I didn't play 15s like at a high level, so I feel like I should not speak to that. Well, I mean, I, I think Adam nailed it on the head in terms of the, yeah. you know, you're still playing a rugby game. It's just a different form of game, right? So, mm -hmm. um, Vanessa, uh, we we probably don't have time to get into a whole whack load around supplement safety, and uh, I know it's something that though we we do want to mention because it is a it is a component, a useful component going into games and, and good game day. Uh, but there's also the responsibility of making sure we're putting good stuff in our body, right? So uh, uh, touching up around that and then maybe wrapping up that conversation. Uh, right. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't mind, I'm going to swap that and talk a little bit about what we just chatted about. And then I'll, I'll touch on uh, the safety piece in a sec. Um, but the one thing I, I was going to say for both Kaylee and Adam, I I love how you've shared uh, what you do on game day and I think it's so realistic and, and important for different athletes to hear and I remember I, I took a photo of our uh, fueling station when I was in Japan I was lucky enough to go with um, women sevens um, back in April last year um, and I remember I took a photo of our recovery station and there were like Ritz crackers and gummy bears and Gatorade and a whole bunch of other things that people wouldn't deem nutritious um, but and I remember I, I I posted that photo and someone was like, you're giving your elite athletes gummy bears and Ritz crackers? That seems insane. And to have people like one, they don't know what it feels like to run into other humans for an hour <laughs> and then try and eat something. It's hard. Um, and so thinking about, you know, a lot of the time when I'm having conversations with athletes and they say, oh, well, this food isn't really healthy or I feel bad if I eat this. And and we'll talk about this kind of at the end just to wrap everything up but you know we always think about food as as tools because the second you kind of attach morality to a food it can it can take some funny turns so you know thinking about gummy bears as something to get your carbohydrate stores up as quickly as possible so that you can recover because you have to play new zealand in two hours and you just had a you know a really rough game that you're stepping off the pitch from like it's have the gummy bears <laughs> Um, so thinking, just quickly recapping everything I just talked about, you covered it all. Um, big things, fuel up right before, so this could be, you know, thinking about um, 15s or 7s. Um, the night before, some people will do kind of a longer, larger carbohydrate amount, um, but night before, especially the, the morning of, as Kaylee talked about, that breakfast, super important. Don't try anything new on that day. Make sure you try all everything uh, before your games in training. Um, so this is an example, and when I was answering that question, um, thinking about the training plates is a great way to think about um, changing your carbohydrates. So this is a great example of about half your plate is carbohydrate here. If we were to eat that way during injury or when you don't have much training, it's not super necessary, right? So the carbohydrate amount is gonna get smaller on your plate, but this is a great example of what it could look like on, uh, on a competition day. Next big piece, and more specific to sevens, um, as Adam was outlining, you have to recover super quickly. So you could have, you know, typically it's about three games in a day, and you might only have uh, an hour, maybe two and a half hours in between your games. 
And if we were just to give you a bit of context, the average person who goes for a run and you know goes through all of their energy stores in their muscle, and they don't really think about carbohydrate intake, recovery, nutrition, any of that fancy stuff, and they just eat normally through the day, it can take up to 24 hours for you to recover your, your muscle glycogen or your muscle energy stores. So we only have two and a half hours. <laughs> we have to be a little bit quick on, on what we're doing. So we try and get, as Kaylee talked about, um, some kind of liquid in, um, we use Infinite Revive, which is a combo of- um, Infinite. Yeah. <laughs> and are you Infinite. Guys moved away from that and did some other things that you guys have used up in the past too. Um, so, it, you know, as they're doing their cool down, walking around, getting everything organized, um, they're sipping on that to make sure that the process of recovery is happening right away. Um, and, and then it's, you know, as much as possible, just trying to top up, especially with those carbohydrates where, where we can. So those apple sauces, the go-go squeezes are, are a huge hit. Um, I have a, right beside the infinite here, uh, it's tart cherry juice. I won't get into a, a lot of this, um, but there's a big part in, in decreasing soreness because, you know, again, running into other humans, <laughs> things can happen. Um, so we're really trying to decrease that soreness. So tart cherry um, is an example of something that we've used um, to help, it's a really high dose antioxidant, help that recovery process. And then Kaylee mentioned uh, casein, which is just a type of protein uh, also found in milk. Whey is the other one, but the difference is that whey uh, gets digested really quickly, whereas casein takes a bit longer. So it's a great one to do before bed um, so that it can help your muscles repair overnight. And the little spiel on supplement safety, um, knowing that um, we just want to make sure that any of our supplements are, are given that little check mark um, to make sure that not only are they safe to consume, um, but they they have a lower risk of having any banned substances in them. So for anyone that's in a testing pool, make sure you're using those third party um, companies to make sure that you are getting safe supplements. Um, and you can go to any of their websites, they have databases to, to check on. And I'm correct, Vanessa, in saying that ultimately the athlete is responsible for what they put in their body, correct? 100%. Yeah. yeah. So as much as you might have a professional offering advice, just be aware that you as an athlete are ultimately the one responsible for what goes in. So, awesome. Um, we're going to have to speed through our last two topics just to make sure we have a few minutes for questions because we do have some really good ones actually that have come in. Um, so I want to move on to nutrition and injury recovery. Adam, I think this has been something you've had to deal with quite a bit. So what's, what's not, sorry, not in terms of, you know, you've had a ton of injuries, but in terms of, you know, recently. Having to, yeah, having to focus on that recently. And, and, and so what, what, what did nutrition need to look like? in recovering for injury and, and how did that um, go for you? Um, yeah, so yeah, nutrition and injury. Uh, yeah, so like I, I tore my ACL in December, so I've been through quite a bit of a process in, uh, you know, the adapting my training and my nutrition and everything uh, as far as, you know, life goes. But uh, as far as nutrition goes, I mean, we can talk about, you know, what we, what we touched on before. Uh, in the sense that uh, we use food as a tool and depending on what we're doing and what our what our uh, regular schedule looks like in our training environment, our food should be a reflection of that. Um, and so for me, you know, uh, I'm not running, obviously, um, and I'm starting to get some more upper body workouts. And that, I mean, that's what I'm pushing a lot. It's upper body and, and the lower body is more of a rehab. But my training volume is down significantly from what it was before. And so naturally, uh, you know, my carbohydrate. Uh, intake is down quite significantly. Um, my protein intake is, however, the same, if not a bit more focused on because, you know, uh, you know one of the things with injury, especially when I, I can speak to my own, is that, you know, muscle atrophy and losing some of that muscle mass when you're not using your leg, you know, you want to give your body those, that protein in order for it to synthesize the muscle and kind of, you know, keep that muscle in your body as much as possible. And it's really important when you're not able to exercise certain limbs or certain parts of your body uh, to keep that muscle mass as much as possible. Now, it's never going to be perfect, but obviously you have kind of a picture of what that looks like and sort of what your intentions are with your diet. Um, uh, but as far as carbohydrates go, I'm still eating, uh, you know, my carbs around my workouts. I'm still fueling my body when I need to. But when I am inactive, uh, you know, like past, past, you know, the afternoon and in the evening, my carbohydrates sources are coming a lot more from fruits and vegetables as, as far as grains and bread or you know anything else like those kind of heavier foods 
Um, so, you know, uh, your diet should definitely reflect what your training environment looks like. Um, and then as you continue to ramp up and recover from your injury, then you can make adjustments to your diet, um, you know, as you need to. So. That's awesome. I actually, uh, tells me that my, my fueling is for, um, the pleasures of my heart. So, um, I can it's definitely, important. <laughs> to me, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's great to know that you like how you've made those changes. So Vanessa, what what does it look like from a like uh, Adam was using um, you know words around atrophy and stuff like that. Like what what does it look like to change your diet to make sure that you're maximizing your recovery uh, to try and is 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 it to try and speed things up or is it just to try and make sure that the recovery happens as best as possible, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, great question. And so I just put up three different points here, and this is really what we're focused on to um, when we're trying to manage someone's diet in getting back to, to training. And the big piece, as Adam mentioned, is minimizing muscle loss. So even as we talked about before, in periods of even off season, it's harder to maintain muscle mass because we're not in the gym as often, we're not pushing as hard. Um, so definitely that's a big piece. So thinking about um, maintaining that protein, um, and as Adam said, it doesn't change hugely, especially because you guys already eat so much and um, you need to maintain that protein regardless through your season. Um, but we bump it up just slightly and then we really, really nail down the timing. So as we talked about before, we can only use so much protein at once to help support the muscle. So the best thing that we can do is spread out our protein intake through the day. Um, the other piece is maximizing repair. So you know, the muscle plays, uh, I mean, so the protein plays a huge role in that, but specifically for, for ligaments, there's also some new research looking at uh, gelatin or collagen supplementation um, because we, you know, historically thought that ligaments were just inert. They didn't respond to anything. They were just there. And then if you broke one, shoot, okay, we have to smush it back together. But what we know now is that that ligament can actually respond to nutrition as muscles do. So that's where, you know, Adam and I worked on uh, using collagen peptides um, right before some of the, um, the rehab. So right before you're going to start to move and put some um, pressure on that ligament, um, having that, that in, in the body to, to try and support that creation of the, the cross linkages in, in his uh, ligament. So as you talked about perfectly, carbohydrate comes down a little bit. And I like that you talked about, you know, you're having the carbohydrate around, around your training, around that um, where you need it the most. And then you can, you know, decrease a little bit at the other parts of the day. And super important to note, you always ate carbs. <laughs> and there was no point in recovery where you were like, nope, I don't need any at all. Um, we still need it for our brain, for our muscles. It, you know, repairing an injury takes energy and we get some of that from carbohydrates. So it's not that carbohydrates go to zero, but they do come down, um, you know, doing a lot less than if we were in full, full training. And then the last thing is, you know, in kind of fast tracking return to competition, this is where, you know, some of that collagen might be something that is part of that kind of 1%, what we can push forward. Um, other things around anti-inflammatory support. So we increased our dose of um, omega-3 fats. Um, and we do take in quite a decent amount for concussion um, prevention as well. Um, but also thinking about antioxidants. So brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Uh, we're using a specific supplement to help support that as well. But again, supplementation is always kind of that last resort to push to that 1%. Um, and you're gonna get the most out of just thinking about some of those um, fresh fruits and veg as well. That's awesome. Uh, great info. And um, hopefully for those who are potentially dealing with injuries or, or when you do, you know, Hopefully not, but when you do maybe come across them again, this is some helpful information. That's great. Um, we're going to move on to my favorite topic. Uh, <laughs> Kaylee, you, you spoke briefly about your experience in Japan. So uh, right around that, balance high-performance nutrition, right, and enjoying how to enjoy what you eat. Um, what does that look like for you, including foods that you enjoy in your high-performance nutrition plan? And how do you make a uh, sustainable change when it when it comes to that? Yeah, um, I think it's important to note that like it's it's a balance, and I am definitely one that likes to balance out my food because I do have cravings and I do love sweets, and um, but with the under understanding that like I need to perform the next day. So um, 
when I give a little example of like, I, I love chocolate and I was talking with Vanessa and I was like, I, sometimes I feel bad for what I eat and sometimes like the amount I eat um and especially let's say around chocolate so like the next day I get an email with a whole list of like snacks I can make with chocolate in them healthier snacks that like implement something that I enjoy that can get me through the day and um help my performance or help me recover um so working with Vanessa has really helped me realize that you can eat what you love um, I think a great thing I kind of said before is like, I'm starting to make more of like, um, especially through COVID of a, a meal plan of like, oh, maybe like with my partner, we'll be like, oh, make this this day, we'll make this the other day. But then I also lack the motivation. So that we're like Friday nights are a night to just, you know what, let's order in and just enjoy what we're eating and not have to think about it. Um, so that, I guess that's my take on a balanced nutrition plan. I'm still like obviously working through it and still I do enjoy my snacks my gummy bears let's say but um yeah as long as you have a mix of everything i i think it's Ailey, good. what would be an example of something that vanessa's thrown your way to to make using chocolate that that has helped fuel your performance but but is not you know a typical chocolate bar right so um one that i really enjoy is protein pancakes i think it has like um mixed oats greek yogurt um some eggs in there, whatever, and then you put chocolate chips in it, and that fuels my craving, and it's good. So it's healthy, healthy enough. So I grew up on chocolate chip pancakes. I know exactly why you love them so much. So. Yep. <laughs> um, so Vanessa, listen, I thought Kaylee brought up some great points around. You know, sometimes we just we have a craving, and and we want to be able to, you know deal with the craving. Um, what can you, what can you recommend around keeping that balance and also, you know, having a little fun while you're at it? Yeah, for sure. I think whenever we talk about cravings, you know, there's so many different things that we can, different perspectives we can come from. And I think, you know, again, whenever we identify something as, you know, this is a, a not so great food, a, a junk food or whatever, it kind of holds this weight to it. So, you know, one thing that Kaylee and I talked about was, you know, it was around Easter, it was during a global pandemic, it's pretty natural that you would want to eat some chocolate. <laughs> so we even talked about, you know, in your, um, in your recovery snack with Greek yogurt and granola, crush up some mini eggs and throw them in, you know, that's totally fine. And that nice. versus having a whole bag of mini eggs because you're like, I can't control myself, helpful. So you can enjoy them, put it in something else. Um, and I think that's just kind of the best way to do it. And Ashley, Ashley's thing. laughing in the background because you said control and I have none, but anyhow. <laughs> the other piece there, you know, and, and Kaylee talked about was um, ordering in on, on a Friday and she was like, honestly, I'm doing such a good job Monday to Thursday, but there's something about Friday that just is really hard. And I think, you know, we had the conversation around, well, what do you normally do? And she's like, oh, it's the other end. And then I kind of said it quietly. I was like, that's totally fine. What do you do? You get sushi, awesome. You get some, you know, protein and carbon there. There's some great omegas in the, in the, um, the salmon. You know, you can get some seaweed salad on the side. You get some veggies there, totally fine. That's your dinner. And, you know, it's something that you can look forward to. So just the very quick things, because I know we don't have um, a lot of time, just ties into everything that we've talked about include foods that you enjoy. Um, I'm going to go to that last point first, making it social. So if it's something that, you know, Kaylee and her partner can do on a Friday night, you look forward to it. Um, other ways you can, you know, you can cook with teammates or, you know, we've been doing a lot of virtual cooking sessions with the team. Um, you know, when you are together, it's nice to do a bit of a potluck. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can make it part of your, your social network and it's a lot easier to, uh, to maintain some of the, the performance nutrition pieces that you're trying to implement. And then the last one, just kind of focusing on small changes. So, you know, it's kind of coming back to the conversation we've had with Adam initially around, you know, we can, if we sit down, it's always, okay, let's look at what you're currently doing, not here's a meal plan for what would be perfect. It's here, here's what you're currently doing. You know, here are your goals that we're, um, we're trying to reach. And, here are a couple of different options of how to get there, which one works for you. And I think focusing on those really small pieces that makes it sustainable is how you, well, one, I create a relationship with the athletes and it allows them to take more ownership over their nutrition and find something that works for them. 
That's awesome. Um, if you guys don't mind, we might run just a few minutes over uh, because there's one or two, well, two or three questions I really, really want to get to. And I think, Vanessa, you might have some really good insight into some of this. Um, th the first one is around uh, the role of caffeine. How does caffeine fit into uh, training or um, uh, game day? Am I just taking all these questions or do we want to put it uh, up? I mean, listen, it, players, <laughs> yeah, feel free. Uh, if, if Kaylee or Adam, you guys have extensive experience with caffeine and what it's meant to you. Go for it. <laughs> Let's go with Adam. Is caffeine yeah. a thing? Do you even drink it? Caffeine's a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I mean, I, I love coffee. Uh, coffee is a huge part of my life. Um, I mean, caffeine, uh, as far as performance, you know, caffeine is a, it, you know, it brings your energy up a little bit, kind of gets gets a little bit of that mental edge. Um, sometimes when I'm having, you know, like a slow morning and I don't want to get into the gym, like having a bit of caffeine, whether it's like a caffeine pill or coffee in the morning uh, is good. Obviously, like most things in life, everything in moderation is kind of, you know, like the key. Um, too much caffeine and it's not a good thing, you know, it's get jittery and it's just like, uh, it, it'll sort of have negative effects. Um, I, I'm still a little bit not so sure of the science behind it. So I'm sure Vanessa can talk a little bit more about how caffeine, you know, affects your body. Um, but I, uh, I love coffee and, uh, you know, we frequently have uh, coffee sessions with the boys, uh, catching up, keeping things social. So um, I, I definitely, it's definitely a big part of my routine, my daily routine. And then, yeah, Vanessa, if you do want to touch on some of the science around caffeine. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, we know caffeine's a, a stimulant, so that's the, where the performance aspect comes from. It can help with quick decision making, um, focus, and keeping those the kind of energy energy up um, if we're also eating carbs. Um, the big thing that is kind of different from the average person, you wake up and you're like, ah, okay, I need a cup of coffee because I want to get my day going. Um, the big difference is we have specific amounts that we shoot for um, that we have to trial in training and timing also really matters. So, you know, if we're going into um, a seven series and on the day we have three games, we have to time our, our, um, our caffeine so that we're actually getting the effect where your muscle um, or sorry, your, your blood levels of caffeine are, are high enough. I clearly didn't have enough today. Um, so thinking about we, it's about 60 minutes for make, to make that happen. So you want to take in the caffeine about 60 minutes before that game. And the other tricky thing with, you know, I love coffee as well, but when you brew coffee, you pick it up from Starbucks, you make your own espresso, the levels of caffeine can vary incredibly. So we actually use a, a caffeine supplement so that we can actually get very precise levels. Um, and we know that those those amounts we've trialed in training, we know exactly what works for that athlete. Um, so we have to use that. Unfortunately, you know, we can have some coffee with breakfast and we know that we just have to top up a little bit. But that timing, so about 60 minutes before, um, we use a very specific amount because they're very elite. The average person, if you have, you know, a coffee, you know, an hour before your, your practice, that should work. And we, of course, have to talk a little bit about sleep. So we know that caffeine can impact sleep. Um, the total amount, but also the time close to sleep. So thinking about, you know, having four coffees in a day spread out until 8 p.m. Um, might have a different impact than having four coffees before noon. Um, so it's playing around with that. And obviously from a, a performance perspective, from being on the seventh circuit, we have a really late game um, and that game isn't as important as getting a good night's sleep because the next day is actually an elimination game. We would potentially say, you know what, with go the caffeine uh, at that point um, and let's focus on your sleep first and then the next day we can we can top up again that's great um i have two more questions one for you vanessa and then one for the for the entire group uh so uh, just on the science side is have you used uh vanessa gps or heart rate data and and has that in any way affected fueling plans for individual athletes or not that is an awesome question. So we have an incredible um, sports scientist named Amara who works with the women's team, and she is the guru of all of this. Um, right now, we don't use heart rate data as much. I'm also not the guru in this, so um, I think we should have another session with Amara, and she can. That's she can a do webinar this. idea. 
totally. <laughs> um, the GPS is really important for understanding the training load. Um, and she's doing a really awesome project now because um, from their video data, they can take a look at games and say, okay, well, the GPS told us they ran around this much and this is the same volume, but you know, in one game, they could have 14 um, contacts. And in the other one, you could have two. There's obviously going to be a very different fatigue factor after those two games, but on the GPS data, if they ran the same amount, that fatigue factor is the same. So she's starting to kind of create some some kind of computer science-y thing um, to give us a, an outcome that'll allow us to to have more of a calculation based on on those training demands. So I we use it and we work closely together, um, but uh, there's there's more nuance that has to be uncovered yeah. but awesome awesome question yeah that's a great question um last one for the group what do you guys having for dinner tonight kaylee Ooh. um i haven't gone that far so that's <laughs> good. it's still early for you guys yes it is what did you have last night what did i have last night um we made a dish with our leftovers that had um Basically, like a stir fry. Nice. Yeah. Hey, Adam. Uh, my night's not very exciting. Uh, I'm having my typical uh, rice, broccoli, veg, and uh, salmon for dinner tonight. So that's what I usually eat regularly, and I mix, mix up the meat. I had my fun night last night. Uh, I made some pasta last night, so that's you know that's how we have fun around here. <laughs> Vanessa. Covid oh, fun. Um, I just did a little kitchen session with a couple of athletes um, this morning, and uh, we made some fish tacos, hence the photo in the background. Um, so I'm going to have some of those. Awesome. <laughs> nice. And, and the question, the person who asked the question asked, uh, especially Nathan, what he, I'm having tonight. Uh, I'm having, there's either leftover uh, chicken Thai curry, which was homemade and delicious, mm. or bean burrito, which was also homemade. So. All very good oh, stuff. Really? Oh, yeah. I heard that in the background. <laughs> yeah, Ashley's. Yeah, she takes all the credit for the cooking, folks. That is uh, 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 just over time. So I appreciate people sticking around a little bit late, um, and I appreciate Vanessa, uh, Adam, and Kaylee taking the time out of their day, and actually for a little bit of time because they've had to do some prep for this as well. So truly appreciate that, knowing that you're trying to get into some sort of training routine and recovering from injury and all that stuff really appreciate the anecdotes and the stories i think it really lends a hand to people who are you know trying to make their way up and and what does this mean from a nutrition perspective uh and and how they can you know take a take on board some of the key learnings from this i really do appreciate you guys taking the time folks thank you very much again for joining us next week we have russell earnshaw talking about his gamification uh, program and uh, both uh, Jackie Titley and myself will be on that so please be sure to join us then again Rugby Canada will come out with a return to play announcement very shortly we're hoping in the next couple of weeks at the very latest but hopefully very much sooner in the meantime uh, everyone have a great night and thank you very much again for being here we look forward to seeing you again next week thanks thank you thanks guys